Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at the cooking studio at Whole Foods for a very special feature for In the Kitchen. We call it Cooking with Kids. We have gathered together with Children's Mercy Hospital and Whole Foods Market to bring you this feature to address issues of child obesity and how families can come together in the kitchen cook together and make for a healthier life and lifestyle. We're beginning first with a dietitian. She is a registered dietitian, Shelly Summer. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to come here and talk about, talk about the health of our children. It's my pleasure, thanks for having me. Certainly, so let's talk about what is the scope of child obesity in America? Well, at this point, about one in three children are overweight or obese. And what that does is put them at risk for other health issues as they continue to be overweight uh, and age. Things like high cholesterol, heart disease, type 2 diabetes. Um, and what can happen is it can actually shorten their lifespan. So it's not just about what's going on with them now, but we're looking down the road as they grow into adulthood. Then, of course, with these unhealthy eating habits, they pass those along to their children. Correct. So we're really about trying to educate our communities on living healthier. And creating new habits. And new habits, healthy habits. Healthy habits. We want to also talk about the impact on their academic lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there that real connection between what you eat and how you're able to perform in school? Well, absolutely. If you're going to school without having breakfast and or skipping school lunch, you're really not providing your body with the nutrients that it needs to function, specifically your brain, which is what you really want. We're working getting our brains. Exactly. Mm -hmm. While you're in school, you want to be able to pay attention, you want to be able to focus on what you're being taught, and you want to be able to learn. Okay. Let's talk about the role we have as parents and grandparents mm -hmm. with uh, healthy eating, the impact that that has. How many times, and some of us have been guilty of this, I know, is we're gonna skip lunch but tell our children they should eat lunch. I mean, how important, how significant is that to our children? I think it's very significant. It's very difficult for kids to um, establish a new habit if they are being told to do something and not being shown to do it as well. I mean, it's one thing to skip lunch once in a blue moon and still encourage your kids to have it, but it's a different thing if you are continually skipping lunch and then asking your children to do something different. The same thing goes with breakfast. It goes with food groups as well. If you're not eating fruits and vegetables and you're asking your kids to, the same sort of things can happen. It's like drinking and smoking and telling your kids not right. to do it. I, I don't think it's sort of the same thing. I, just, we, I think sometimes as parents we forget how very important we are. And my father, may he rest in peace, said, you really don't need to teach your children how to eat right. You eat right, and then they will. So let's get some visuals here. Um, we had talked about a plate model. Right. What what does that plate or should that plate look like for that ongoing healthy eating habits? Right. Well, really what we want to do is focus more on plants. Okay. And half of our plate should be full of fruits and or vegetables. Mm -hmm. A quarter of it would be your protein source, mm -hmm. whatever that happens to be, whether it's meat or a vegetarian option. And then the other quarter of your plate should be something like a whole grain. So if we think of every time we sit down to have a meal, having that composition mm -hmm. on our plates, we are really headed in the right direction. Yes. Sometimes yeah. we think, oh well, here's the plate and we'll put one spear of broccoli on, got it. And there's, my, That's right. there's my green vegetable, but it's just such a small part of what's on your plate. Right. So we think those proportions. Right. Exactly. Like spaghetti is always the example that I like to use. It's not that I'm opposed to spaghetti because frankly I love spaghetti. Yes. But what most people do for spaghetti is a plate full of spaghetti, yes. a little sauce, yes. a little meatball, yeah. and then additional starch like garlic bread or breadsticks <laughs> along with it. Instead, reduce that portion and have half of that plate be something like a salad or green beans or broccoli yes. or any other vegetable and then reduce the portion of your spaghetti and have a, you know, more vegetable. Mm -hmm. You can, more it's vegetable. even fun to toss some of those vegetables in the pasta now that you sure would in the sauce. Would, it would mm -hmm. in the It'd sauce. Be fantastic. 
All right, so we're approaching the holiday season and many of us are going to be out and about with our children doing shopping, right. which leads to probably more opportunities to eat lunch out. And that's the purpose of our time together today. What's for lunch? Mm -hmm. We're in the restaurant, there's a long menu. Um, can you help us with our thinking around selecting menu items when we're out for lunch? Well, I think the same things that we were just talked about apply to when you're eating out. So, for example, um, salads tend to be really good options because it's plant-based, mostly vegetables, add a little bit of protein in there. The real issue with salads is in the salad dressings. What soda dressings are you using and how high calorie or high fat are those? Vinaigrettes, um, obviously, are a little bit lower in calories and the type of fat that we would prefer um, to be consuming over a cream-based dressing. Some kids don't like salads, so then you go for other things such as deli sandwiches mm -hmm. and really encouraging lots of vegetables on those sandwiches. Um, not just lettuce suggestion. or tomato, yeah. but you can do other fun things like banana peppers, which we're going to use today. Delicious, yes. Green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers, um, cucumbers, uh, really anything, carrots, shredded carrots. Um, putting as many vegetables on that as you can and really again reducing the type of dressings that you're putting on there. What most people tend to go for are really fried foods when you're eating when you're eating out. Mm -hmm. They just happen to be quick, easy, and convenient. Most restaurants have an alternative to the French fry as a side, whether it's applesauce, apple slices, mandarin oranges, side salad, or baked potato. potato. Right. Exactly. Right. So there are lots of different things that are available. And what I'd really like for parents or to encourage parents to do is um, provide those options to their kids because when kids are continually asked they're going to go for the thing that's quick that's easy and that they're most familiar with mm -hmm. it doesn't mean they wouldn't eat the other options but if you're asked if you're asking a child to choose between an apple and a cookie 90 percent of the time they're going to choose the they're cookie choose if the you cookie. ask them to choose between an apple and a banana both are great choices right. and they're going to have something um, a little bit better for them. And of course what you select on the menu is important as well. And right. what I've seen some families do is, okay, we really want some french fries, so I'll order french fries and you order the baked potato and then we'll split it up so we get a few bites, but it's not a whole plate of french right. fries for every each person. Right. And I think that's a great idea as well. I also encourage people if they're going to go, let's just say they're going to a fast food hamburger place, mm -hmm. not to have the hamburger and the french fries. Maybe one or the other. If you prefer the french fries, like with your example, maybe try the grilled meat sandwich, for example, a grilled chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe they have happen to have a grilled fish option. Mm -hmm. Many places now have salmon um, sandwiches available, which are fantastic. And many kids, once they have, do like that. Um, they might have a low fat turkey burger or a veggie burger that you could have instead. And then pair, have a few french fries with that. Sharing them, like you already indicated, would be another way to handle and that. And even sharing a salad right. to, to do that right. as well. So there are options. There you are know, options. It does, it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> Thank you for helping us from the parenting role directly with our children. My pleasure. From here, we're going to talk to Jennifer Matasek here at Whole Foods and learn some things about how to select from your, pan how to stock your pantry mm -hmm. and how to prepare for packing that healthy lunch. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Bonnie. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and once again, we are in the cooking studio at Whole Foods Market. Again, it has been sponsored by Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics as well to bring you a very special feature, Cooking with Kids, is to address issues of child obesity and family health. And with me is Jennifer Matasek. She is their Director of Marketing here at the 91st and Medcalf store. Thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. Well, thanks for having us. So let's begin. The feature this time is what's for lunch. So how do we begin by preparing our pantry for lunch at home? Well, actually, you can start very simply. Yes. Um, some nice things to have on hand would be nut butters. They can stay for a really long time in your pantry. Uh, that could be peanut butter, almond butter, you name it, whatever nut butter you like. 
jellies are also good to have on hand. Um, a little interesting fact is that back in the early 1900s, peanut butter was actually considered a delicacy and was served at the finest restaurants and places. Didn't know that. In New York. Yes, it wasn't until the 1920s that that became popular uh, for school lunches, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So. You can keep some bread, some jelly, some nuts. Mm -hmm. um, those make a nice snack too, some trail mix type things. Mm -hmm. um, dried fruits are great. Raisins, box of raisins, throw that in a lunch bag, make that real easy. There's also a lot of um, different fruit containers that they offer now for kids for school that just have a flip, a flip top. Mm -hmm. And those are great to have on hand too. Any other sandwich suggestions besides our classic peanut butter and jelly? Well, we're going to have some pretty neat things coming up here later in the mm -hmm. show. Um, you know, you can do a deli meat sandwich. Mm -hmm. You just need to keep an eye on that. Uh, make sure that you're not keeping that in your fridge too long. And, um, you know, there's some really nice things that you can do with hummus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that you can make really easily at home. There's uh, all sorts of different things that you can do. I used to like uh, peanut butter and honey myself. Some people like to throw some that. bananas mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was one of my, my dad's favorites too. Okay, so we've packed lunch because we're going to talk about lunch in a variety of ways. We've already discussed eating out uh -huh. and, and some selections, healthy menu item selections. Now we're going to talk about shopping. We've just talked about shopping for it. Mm -hmm. um, now we're packing lunch at home. Can you offer some safety tips for making sure that lunch stays safe Certainly. once you get to school? Um, you know, a lot of people talk about taking a brown paper bag, mm -hmm. and y you can, but it's really hard to keep foods at, at the right temperature in a brown paper bag. Um, so what we do recommend is going ahead and getting something that's um, insulated. And you use it over and over again. You so do. it's green. It is. Yeah. It's green. And, and we're talking $10 or less for a nice, a nice reusable lunch bag uh, or box. Mm -hmm. And then you also want to make sure that you do clean it on a regular basis. Hello. <laughs> and then so you could put ice in a yes. Ziploc baggie or one of those. Exactly. A, an ice pack. And I really do recommend getting an ice pack that okay. um, fully freezes. The gel ones don't seem to keep frozen as long, uh, so I don't think they keep the food quite as cold as you'd like. But you want to keep cold foods cold, hot foods hot. If you get insulated containers like an insulated thermos and you heat it up to at least 140 degrees, then you can go ahead and do something like a tomato soup and have that hot in the container for the kid. In the winter. In the winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brought from home. Okay, let's talk about lunch. You know, we can prepare lunch at home for our children to take to school, but also there's been a lot of discussion about the quality of lunches that are offered at school. And parents, we are the advocates for a healthy lunch. I'd like to talk about one particular woman who's apparently been a, a pioneer, Chef Anne. Could you tell us a little bit about her story? She's a remarkable lady. She is pretty neat. Her name is Chef Ann Cooper, and she is known as the renegade lunch lady. You go, girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's exactly what she did. Um, she just felt that the school lunches were not up to par, and she was noticing that nutritionally. And so she actually created the lunchbox.org, which is a website toolbox, uh, or lunchbox, if yes. you will, mm -hmm. for schools to use so that they can um, get recipes. There are 120 recipes on there that anybody can access. It's free to use. Mm -hmm. That can be scaled to a family size or to feed an entire school. Uh, so there's scalable recipes that are out there for free, as well as information as far as how schools can acquire healthy foods and foods that are in season so that they're getting more fresh foods to our kids. I think one of the, the, the major arguments against doing this, or what we've heard or been led to believe, is that providing really healthy, fresh lunches is just too expensive. And I believe she has almost single-handedly dispelled that myth. So it's a great resource. It is a fabulous resource, and it is fascinating. When you do price compare, uh, if you have access to things like that, it's amazing. A lot of times, depending on what specials are, you can get organic apples that are less expensive than a conventionally grown apple that may have been sprayed with pesticides mm -hmm. and grown in conditions that you might think twice about it before you eat. So, well, and the taste, I, you know, th there is a difference in the taste of organic fruits and vegetables. There isn't that bitterness. And 
And so, and I know that you all, and there are programs out there that have done a wonderful job trying to make healthy foods accessible to the community. I'd like to talk about your salad bar program because that's amazing and I think if more people knew about it they would have the opportunity to support it. Well really our Kansas City community is amazing because amazing. they're the ones who helped us to raise the, the funds in the Kansas City area to um, offer five salad bars to schools uh, in the KC Metro, mm -hmm. which is pretty exciting. Now, so the way this works as I understand it is a school can apply to be a recipient of a salad bar grant. Correct. And and that would mean that they would have funds available to provide a salad bar option in their They would shop. literally get the salad bar they and the pans the and the serving utensils and the, pretty much everything but the food. <laughs> so just yeah. making, providing the infrastructure, if you will, for a salad bar. Exactly. So do, if we're a parent, do we go to our school district or school and, and talk with them about this? Yes. Is that a beginning? That would be a beginning and really the, the lunchbox.org, you got to remember T-H-E in front of it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just a fabulous resource for parents, for kids, and for the schools. Um, so if somebody's interested in, in learning more about that, that website's up all the time um, helping people out. And we talked about it takes, again, a village to raise a child and it's going to take a village to make our children healthier. And the school is one place for that to happen. So please be mindful to go to those resources, contact your schools as parents, get together and talk about it because it's our children that we're feeding. Exactly. Um, and the schools are trying to do a good job. Sure they are. They mm -hmm. just need some support and help and that's what exactly. parents do. Exactly. That's, what, that's part of our role. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the other programs that you have here with WIC and the food stamps and all of that. Certainly. Well, it's really simple. Uh, folks who are on some type of gov government aid or assistance can shop here just as easily as anywhere else. And when I say here, I mean Whole Foods Market. Yes. Um, and they do have access to those things that I was mentioning earlier, like the, the really great organic products that go on sale and the seasonal foods. It's and a, buying in bulk, too, which is very inexpensive. So um, these programs are available for all of our community. Exactly, exactly. At Whole Foods Market, we really believe that food should be affordable and accessible for everyone. Well, uh, Jennifer, thank you again for inviting us into the cooking studio. We are now going to go to Chef Executive Chef, James Beard Award-winning Chef Michael Smith with his two daughters, Misha and Sophie, and he's going to cook with his children to answer the question, what's for lunch? Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we are in the kitchen this week at the cooking studio at Whole Foods Market. With me is James Beard award-winning executive chef Michael Smith, owner of Michael Smith and Extra Virgin. And with him in the kitchen are his two daughters, Misha and Sophie. Thank all three of you for coming here today. We are getting ready to prepare three dishes because your daughters have asked you what's for lunch yeah and the answer as i understand it is a thai shrimp roll uh, a warm tortilla and a vegetable salad which sounds very healthy and we know that when our children are in the kitchen with us and they're helping to select the food and prepare the food they're more likely to eat it <laughs> yeah, we yeah we typically um, talk about what we're gonna have for dinner, or yes. you know we they usually like what I think about having for dinner. Mm -hmm. We like to eat you know different ethnic foods, and so those ethnic foods usually most of the time translate into things like this, which can be pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can also go the other way and not be so healthy. So we tend to we tend to eat salads at every meal. We tend to use you know a fair amount of vegetables. Yes. Um, you know, good, good, you know, not overly protein, you know, not too much like huge steak and then nothing else. So we, we're pretty balanced. Okay. Our dietitian from Children's Mercy Hospital is 
thrilled. <laughs> well, we're not perfect, you know, but in general, I think we eat. The, we, we really, eat, really. We try to eat the right way. We drink the right way in terms of waters and, you know, the fresh squeezed juices or things that are a little more healthy for you, teas or something like that, you know. And a question that I've noticed with families that eat healthy is, um, it seems like the children eat what the parents eat. They don't, was that, is that true in your household oh, too? Oh yeah, I'm a huge believer in that. I, I just don't like that you cook a separate meal for kids and then the parents go and eat something else. I just mm -hmm. don't, you know, if there's a side dish that they really are a favorite, sure. But we eat, if we're gonna eat lamb rack, we eat lamb rack. We're gonna eat rabbit, we eat rabbit. Mm -hmm. We eat steak, we eat steak. I mean, we all eat the same and mm -hmm. um, you know, they like it, they like it, if they don't, then they, they don't eat. You know? But it gives them an opportunity for you to introduce them to food. Right. It's sort of about, it's as much about, you know, eating different foods and learning about food as much as it is about a discipline of the way you should eat as a family or you should treat, you know, respect food. Okay. So it's a little bit of both sometimes. Okay, chef. So the first one is the Thai shrimp roll. And you have great sous chefs on either side of you. So where do we begin? We, we, we're pretty familiar with all these ingredients. We use a lot of cilantro, mint, and basil in the house. Mm. Shrimp. So you can, you can, uh, Sophie, you can start slicing up some of that cucumber. You can start peeling up the carrot. So uh, Sophie is, is using a mandolin? Yeah, she can use this mandolin, which can be um, it's very sharp. And so you, you don't want to hold it like this. Hold it underneath like this. Sometimes the first one's harder to start. It is. It's harder sometimes for me to do, too. Look how beautiful that yeah. looks. See, and then you have all these perfectly little strips Look at of that. Cucumber. You did that. You did that. And so, now Dad wants you to do this with another one, remembering to keep your fingers curled up. There you go. Help or two. Now, Chef, what else are we going to prepare for this roll? So we're going to peel some sh uh, the shrimp that's almost peeled, so we're going to take the tails off and okay. kind of probably cut them in half just to flatten them a little bit. we got a little bit of carrot we're going to do the same thing with, and I'll probably do that because it's a harder vegetable to deal with in there, so it's not as, it's okay. a little bit more dangerous. Now, these have already been cooked yeah. and deveined, and yeah. now we're just going to pop their tails off. And all you want, yeah, it's just a real simple, usually they're, they're, sometimes they have chicken in them or some kind of pork, but typically shrimp. Shrimp is more, is a... Very classic, pork, yeah. Very Classic. And there is okay. a sometimes they'll combine pork and shrimp uh, in the same dish, but you're probably done, Sophie. Okay, Sophie, thank See, you so, so much for your help. We'll See, you got the feel of that, didn't you? And then we kind of want to keep all these vegetables mm. in, in their in their same kind of strip because that's kind of how they're going to go in the roll. Look how beautiful um, that is. So we kind of keep that. that. You did that. You can okay. Peel those you now want. you're going to be taking their tails off. Yeah. Take the tail away. And I'll end up yeah. using. Okay, now, Dad, and so this is where the parents make decisions about what makes sense for Mom and Dad to do and not. And so, Dad said he's going to do the carrot because it's harder and there's a greater opportunity for someone to get their fingers cut. That mandolin, and they also have guards, too. Yeah, there's a guard. That and you know what else you can do? You can wrap a towel or a cloth yep. around your fingers. That's what I don't trust myself. Yeah. So that's what I do, and you're, you're a great t tail remover. You want to cut some of those up in long strips? Okay, what do you mean? Here, go like this. So Dad's going to show you how to get the green onions yeah, ready. Cut them like that a little bit. You want to just kind okay. of slice Keeping them. your fingers curled under. You know how to do that. Okay. So look, what we're going for is that all the vegetables end up in strips, which makes mm -hmm. it easier yeah, to roll to and roll. and when when you bite into the to the to the roll, they'll be very easily sort of you know chewable, I guess. And you take uh, you get all the flavors at once. I think yeah. that's the other fun mix, thing yeah. about a yeah. roll is getting all those flavors. That is the great thing about these rolls is it, and it's not even as much the vegetables as I, I like. You know, the vegetables are just the vegetables and the lettuce just provide this crunch. Yes. But it's really the um, the, the herbs, and I think that's one of the reasons why I think my kids have have sort of learned to like they're those flavors yeah. because they're really bright and they're fresh and they're not afraid of them because they're in this roll. I know kids are, tend to be afraid of this green thing sometimes mm -hmm. to sprinkle mm -hmm. on their food and mm -hmm. so these inside that roll gives a great flavor and, and so then they're not afraid of them once they see them kind of like this and ready to go into food. Because it's already a familiar, yes. a familiar taste for them. My son started eating cilantro when most kids like your, would go ooh. Right. And that's because he actually started it with Taishin. Right. And, and, um, and or the, uh, you know, anything with sort of Mexican flavors or South American yes. flavors with cilantro, yes. salsas, 
um, yeah, my kids have been eating that since, you know, since they were little, and so really, it really gets the palate uh, educated for sure. Okay, so we have run the cucumber through the mandolin, and Dad did the carrots, and Misha is doing the green onions, and Sophie has helped take the tails off the shrimp. That wouldn't be very flavorful inside, but no, uh -uh, we won't. I mean, crunch, but not that kind of crunch. And Dad's helping. All right, so pick some smell of that. You know, that's the other fun thing about cooking is the smell. Now, I know, Misha, you like iced tea, and you could be putting some of these mint leaves in the iced tea, yeah. especially in the summer, and you just kind of crush it a little bit. What we are we going to do with these? We do need to do a little bit of lettuce. Okay. So, here, we put these back. Thank you. And just maybe, um, you know, strip some lettuce like that if you guys want to do a few leaves like that. Okay, Chef. We've prepped everything that's going inside the roll. Now, how do we get these... Let's see, they're spring roll wrappers. How do we get them ready? Um, the wrappers are pretty simple. We're just gonna soak them in a little bit of warm water, like pretty hot, hot warm water, you know, I mean, uh, whatever, you know, heat comes out of your, out of your faucet, but it's really just to um, soften them so very quickly. They're getting softened very quickly, just pan or, bo or large bowl of warm water. Something to fit in. And then once it's, uh, once it's, now this is sort of tricky because it, it can cross they can over the line fast, to yeah. do it. So once I, so I what usually, are we looking for? Usually once it once it's sort of soft like this, uh, I, I take so it out and just start laying some of your product on there. So you want to okay. lay so one of these guys on this there. This is how we're getting it ready. Put down lettuce. And then you just grab as much as your you know kind of as much as your if you, if you like more carrot cucumber than carrot. If you like a little bit of onion, if it's less onion. It's so now, cilantro. A lot of, I see, you know, both Misha and Sophie have specific ideas about what they like in their roll. And then lots of times, you know, many times noodles go straight in here too, the, 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 the rice noodles. Uh, we have got a boatload of vegetables and protein in here. And you have to be careful. Yeah, you, yeah you're pretty good. You want to stack these up inside your lettuce a so little bit because you want to create it. get it into a little, yeah, tunnel like. You want carrots? You're gonna want to go. Yummy. Do you like onions at all? Or did you want to put them in? Well, see, then you don't have to do that, right? That's your choice. This is your roll. It, it, it's sort of customized, if you will. And put any of your herbs that you want. And that, you know, that's another point: is that incorporating the, what the kids really love. Look at that. Oh, pretty. This is beautiful. In addition to being healthy and yummy. Look at that. So sometimes you turn Let's them upside down, line. actually you should have like upside down like that. So upside down? Yeah, so that the red is gonna be on the outside of that roll. Because remember, we eat with our eyes first, so this is a visual experience as well. Yes, the, mm -hmm. the chef and me, sorry. The chef and no, but that's what makes children excited about their food too, same thing. All right, then you roll. Okay, so where do we gotta, begin rolling? So the best thing to do is kind of, like your hand, yours is dry, see a little bit wet. Yeah. Not totally, but you want them a little bit damp so you can bit. pick up that, um, so you can pick up the, the, the rice paper. And let's see what Dad, how And Dad you just want to. Oh, that's it, you're doing it, making it nice and, and then tight. Try to tuck, yeah, tuck it as tight as you can. As you can. Squeeze your vegetables right there. You're squeezing it. Look how pretty you your shrimp looks. Look at that. Do you believe you did this? You did this. We're still answering the question, what's for lunch here in the cooking studio at Whole Foods? Again, also sponsored by Children's Mercy Hospital and Clinics. To answer that question, we have with us Executive Chef Michael Smith of Michael Smith and Extra Virgin, and his two lovely daughters, Misha and Sophie. We are cooking in the kitchen with our kids. Chef, what's the next dish? So we're gonna do a salad. Um, this salad may or may not be something we'd have with dinner. This, this could be uh, more of an entree, lunch type salad. Um, we typically have uh, salads with every meal, whether it's just a Good simple Caesar, we're gonna have a Caesar salad tonight probably. Uh, but we'll do other vegetable type salads, lots of cucumbers and tomatoes in the summertime. They love that, you know, they love all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But this particular salad would be a little bit more stuff in it and more of an entree-ish, you know, okay. something like a full meal with a little bit of chicken protein. Okay. Type. So Sophie, you're gonna 
uh, we, we've got some um, canned uh, beets that are easy to, mm -hmm. you, sometimes you can get them in the store and you want to cook them yourself, that's great. Sure. If you want to get a can set, that's fine too. And so we've gotten some uh, uh, sliced beets out of a can. We uh, poured a little bit of balsamic vinegar on them just to give them a little tang, mm. salt and pepper. Okay, yes, we can see that now. So they've mm -hmm. been soaking in, inside of some balsamic yeah, vinegar. Just to give them a little punch, you know. Okay. Uh, they're very slice. earthy and they can take that kind of thing. You're gonna, uh, Misha's gonna slice up some, kind of wedge up some um, uh, fresh radishes. I'm gonna slice just a little bit of onion. I like a little bit of onion in the salad, although, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't like too much raw onion, but I think it, it provides a little bite that I like. And you Sometimes chose you scallion. a red onion. It's a little sweeter. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's also you can use scallion too. It's pretty too. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty in the salad. Yeah. So I'm just gonna barely just just slice it up very small, so, you, so it just kind of disappears in there, but you get some flavor. So you don't get a big bite of onion, but it contributes to the overall right. taste of the salad. And so all of us are using knives, and we notice that Miss Sophie has her fingers curled under and keeping it away as does Misha. So uh, a combination that I like a lot is uh, these yellow pickled banana peppers um, with beets. I think that's, that's a great- a great combination. And even that with, and then the sesame, the- um, uh, sunflower, sunflower seeds, seeds. Yeah, it's just it. so crunchy, the earthiness and the color. I mean, they're just good colors and they're just good flavors together. And all of this is taking minutes, and of course you do go off what your children love to eat or what you're trying to introduce them to eat, but look how quick all of these ingredients are ready. They're there, available, yeah. off the shelf, out of the refrigerator. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a chef and I mm -hmm. cook serious food, mm -hmm. but I also realize there's time constraints, and I'm, I'm personally not afraid of using a condiment out of the, yeah. you know, out of the refrigerator, out of the shelf, that, that I didn't make maybe make homemade, you mix it with some things, I mean, it's no big deal. It really does get overwhelming to think, I've got to go to the grocery store every right. single day that I cook. Right. So some of this is just about planning, well, I know if we're roasting a chicken the night before, maybe lunch or dinner the next day, is that roasted chicken sliced on a bed of greens you know, and vegetables. Oh, yeah. And One of our favorite snacks all time is, is, is leftover steak. Any kind of leftover steak that's typically about medium rare, cold. Yes. Yes. I take olive it cold oil. right out of the fridge, I cube it up, toss it in a little bowl like this with fresh olive oil, maybe some salt. chili flakes, some of those red pepper flakes, oh, yes. a little bit of fresh basil, and See, salt and pepper. And she already knows, so obviously and that's it. you've and done it. eat it, and it's so flavorful with the olive oil and the fresh basil, and it's freshly seasoned. It's awesome. It's awesome. And they get the protein. It's a you snack that's not protein. garbage, you know? Right. <laughs> Right. It's kind of fun. Okay. Take the bowl and we'll okay. just start kind of building the salad. Okay, we're building the salad and... So you want to put your beets in there? Each of the kids have contributed to what's going in and on some instances have helped make decisions about what they like in the salad. Do you guys like beets? No, um, beets. Calm down. They're not super... I mean, they wouldn't go out and ask for a beet, but they would probably... They would eat, eat it in there. Yeah. 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 And so that helps them develop this, the taste for more food. Yeah. yeah. You know, we just sort of, um, you know, I'll put stuff in, you know, if it's in the salad and it's a piece that they can just knock to the side, then knock it. I don't care. Yeah. You know, but eventually that bit sneaks right. in, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah, it does. They get those okay, flavors. Look how I mean, just right now. Look right off the bat, yeah, you've got it's some really beautiful. nice beautiful colors. Makes you want to eat that. Some radishes. Mm -hmm. Radishes are going to once again give you more crunch and a little yes. bit of that sort of bite same onion yep, bite yep, that you okay. get, you know, even though it's not oniony. Um, so, so we've got, you know, again, once again, our dietitian is going to be thrilled because we have the majority of what is in here are vegetables and we've got our protein. So protein, exactly. Great. And then there's always, you know, protein. Americans, when we eat, we like crunchy, we like we sort of sweet and sour. We, we like all kinds of little things. So crunchy because of um, uh, because these little uh, sunflower seeds, it's going to mm -hmm. be good. And then I'm going to drizzle um, a little bit of olive oil. And so the that's vinegar a small first. amount of fat. You don't need, yeah, yeah you just need a little bit. A little bit. healthy for you. And then. we know healthy fats are good for us. There's some more of that balsamic vinegar that you used on the beets. So that's going to give everything its tang. Oh, no. And so we, we, we kind of toss that around. I'm going to use my hands, I guess. You know, because these are the best kitchen tools. They Your came hands? before anything uh, else. You know they did. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll, we'll toss the salad in here because if you do all that with the salad first, you'll you crush the lettuces a little bit. 
So you add the lettuce last. Yeah. So it doesn't get bruised and misused. Yep. And these are mixed greens, easy enough to put together. Yep. This what took less than five minutes. Yeah. And it was just pulled it out of the kitchen, leftover chicken, and we have a delicious salad. And you know whether. We are still in the kitchen at the cooking studio at Whole Foods Market. We are answering the question, what's for lunch? And to do that, we have executive chef Michael Smith of Michael Smith and Extra Virgin and his two daughters who are his sous chefs, Misha and Sophie. Thank you for coming here again yeah. today. This is a warm tortilla. Yeah, kind of like a quesadilla. Quesadilla, um, okay. Uh, Where do we begin, chef? We, we, we typically um, eat this, tortillas are our bread at home, pretty much. So mm. we've been eating tortillas since they were born, you know, so we like tortillas and we fill them with anything. You can use leftover, you know, steak once yes. again, like uh, out of the fridge. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we'll, cook, we'll cook a little bit of fresh stew just to show you what we do. Okay. But really we're gonna, um, Misha's gonna slice up a little bit of onion. And then when we cook the meat, uh, Sophie's gonna build the stacks and then we'll cook them here a little bit, warm them up, get them melty and gooey, and then we'll we cut them into kind of like a pizza wedge and then yes. to eat. And we're ready to yeah. eat. Okay, so we're gonna begin here with the sirloin. Yeah, and so I always use a little, I use a little canola oil or olive oil. I think it's okay. okay. You know, uh, don't use the really expensive olive oil to cook with, but. And, and let's remember that because you're going to lose the flavor of it and it's a wasted expense. Right. I noticed that you got the pan very hot before you added the oil and the product to it. it has good and flavor. It's, it's, yeah. Okay. It's going to caramelize. Yeah. So we're going to put a little bit of uh, cumin mm -hmm. and, the, and the onion that she's got in here. Come on. That's so really ground good. cumin, onion, and meat, lean meat, and we're getting our meat product ready to go. Oh, oh, no. I, get, I need to remember to use cumin because it's another flavor profile yeah. and it really sets off the dish. Look at that and color that you would not have gotten if you right. hadn't gotten the pan hot first. True, exactly true. Okay. It takes a couple extra minutes. Okay, so we quickly caramelize the onion and the meat. And that's really all the cooking that we're going to do. And as you said, if you'd right. had steak left over from last night, that would have... Right, so over here, and then you girls can start, we just start building some tortillas. All right, so these are regular corn tortillas. Mm -hmm. These are yellow corn tortillas. These yellow corn tortillas. And what kind of cheese, Chef? We're using some Monterey Jack. It's got, it's got a little bit of chili in it. It might be like a jalapeno uh, uh, Monterey Jack, which gives it some oomph. Yep, we got it. We'll put some cilantro in there. So you want to spread cilantro all over the place. You can put the cilantro on here too, it doesn't matter. You can put a little garlic in there. There's lots of things, red right. bell peppers. I mean, you right. can add tons of vegetables like we were talking earlier yes. to this. Yes. Um, um, you can put radishes, you can put, you know, sauteed radishes are unusual. You, know, and you don't you do just, that in America too much, but it's really good. It's really good and something to think of to do. We had radishes left over from the vegetable salad and we could throw that in right. there as well. The cilantro, once again, kind of goes back and forth between Thai and yeah. Southwest. Yeah, great flavor. Oh, yeah. But the way we're building the warm tortillas is with really cheese right and meat okay. and onion and cilantro. And Dad's encouraging us to be generous. Yeah, you want to. You want. They want to have a little. You want some protein in there. And a lot of times, I'll. I'll just instead of making it big like this, I just roll it up and either cook it or microwave it. So now it's soft. Okay. So you can microwave it without the oil. If now you, you can get if rid of the oil. If you wanted to avoid extra oil, we walk around with them. I make, I make, I roll them up in a little, little taco, like taquito type, and mm -hmm. microwave them all the time. They walk around, and that's their snack. And so we mm -hmm. breakfast. That's breakfast, walking out the door. Breakfast. If we get, get in a bind, sometimes it's kind of tricky. Sometimes. So, and what is the goal? You're not really trying to color it. That you're just trying no. to warm a little yeah. bit of color. Melt the cheese, get a little color on it. Get them. You know, the tortillas that come out of the package, even if they're freshly made, they need some kind of heat or crispiness or slight, you know, slight cooking to give it some of that toothsomeness that's really, and it kind of brings out that corn flavor and toasts the corn a little bit more. And you know, in the restaurant business, you know, if we have a, a product that maybe takes on a little bit too much uh, fat, mm -hmm. when you're sauteing like chips or something like that, you can always take some of that off. That is know? a wonderful Use a paper towel or a towel, yeah. whatever, and so. You know, you so we've kinda... reduced the fat just by patting it, yeah. kept the flavor, it did what it needed yes. to do. 
So we're going to be using an off-the-shelf salsa, and you bring out a really good point, and that is, please read the ingredients. You don't want a lot of sugar and right. preservatives. And right. And, and there's there's brands out there that are pretty natural, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, you know have the tomato. -y, you know you you have the natural products that are in a salsa, mm -hmm. the peppers and the tomatoes and onions, without all the extra sugar and stuff. Mm -hmm. When you're with our eyes first, Chef, how do you recommend plating this? Ooh, look how beautiful. Well, I and mean, sometimes you, you know, you might just stand one up, lay one down, stand one up. Wow. Show the shrimp on that side, look you know. At that. Look how much fun it is just doing that one little technique. That's yeah, so mm -hmm. Nice. Put that in there, perfect. Now, dipping sauces, right, Chef? Let's do this. Let's do one, two, three on the outside. There you go. Oops. Come here, little guy. See, they're very forgiving. If they get yep. dropped, they don't get upset. I'll or put anything. a little dipping sauce right in the Okay, what, what, do you, what do you suggest for this? Well, um, I mean, if you, if, you know, it just sort of depends on your, the flavor profiles you like, but if, you know, if you like soy sauce or like a ponzu type, you can dip it in ponzu. That's easily not a problem. And then if you want, um, like a, like a, Typical Asian sweet chili sauce. This is comes right off the shelf and it is really pretty good. Mm. And it's just a sort of a sweet and sour dipping sauce. And that's it. They're ready to go. That's lunch. That is lunch. So chef, we're gonna plate. Okay. Uh, sous chefs, do you want to look how easy this is? So really, you know, and then you, you just know, all the it other. It's fun to make it hot. Look how Dad's making this high. And the stuff always falls fun. to the bottom, so yep. you kind of. That good stuff has to get the, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a pretty good looking salad. You know what? That's an amazing salad. And good uh, enough to eat, you know? And then maybe you just do a little. Fresh cracked pepper. In my chef world, I would have tossed all that in the bowl, but you know. Okay, a little bit of salt, not yeah. very much. Yeah. And we have lunch. Another answer to the question, what's for lunch? And now, sous chefs, we are going to plate this because we mentioned earlier, you eat your eyes first. Now you can, You're enjoying this before you ever take you, a bite of it. You can shingle these, or if oh, you want to make it really pretty that. or something. Yeah, know. let's make it really pretty. Okay. And sometimes when you're dead, you go, oh, there we go. Did you get it? That's why we cook with our kids, because dads and moms need it. There we go. See how you did that? You kind of rocked the knife. Okay, look at this. All right. How yummy is this? Mm -hmm. So then you a little thing of salsa here. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's always good to garnish with a little bit of green. You know, isn't that amazing how green just makes it work? You know, you do something like that. Of course, we don't do that at home. We just start munching on it. <laughs> I don't know. That looks pretty good, chef. And sous chefs. Ladies, you have worked very hard to prepare this dish with your dad, and now you are also our celebrity tasters. So if you would, dip it, taste it, and tell us what you think. And it's your work, too. That's a serious bite. That's a serious bite. I think Dad feels like he probably needs to taste it as well. Mm. What do you think? What are you tasting? What are the flavors that you're tasting? Mm. It's kind of tangy from the sauce right off the bat, right? Mm -hmm. As you get into the cucumber, the basil. Carrots. The basil, and the carrots. And the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Kind of all comes together. That's yeah. the... do, do you like it? Yeah. yeah. You like it a lot? Mm -hmm. Are you going to help your father make this in the future in the kitchen? Probably. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we have a winner with the first dish, Chef. Yeah. So, Sue Chefs, Sophie and Misha Smith have helped their dad, Executive Chef Michael Smith, prepare the next dish. It's a vegetable salad with 
Chicken left over from the night before, answering the question, what's for lunch? Now, ladies, you've worked very hard to prepare this. Actually, it didn't take long, but you did yeah. work hard. It was a hard now work. we need, yeah, it was a hard five minutes. Okay. <laughs> now tell us, what do you think of your creation? Okay. So, so this colorful. means you taste it. Yeah, it's pretty colorful. Yeah, it's a nice looking salad. It makes you want to taste. It's so pretty. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's good? Yeah. Tell me it? why you think it's good. Um, I like the sunflower seeds. Mm. Also, I like it how the vinegar is an overpowering salad. Good. I like it. And the chilies, yeah. like the, the yellow peppers, are kind of a little bit spicy. I'm expected in here. And what were you going to say? You like I like what? how um, all the tastes come together. Ah. So the parts are contributing to the whole experience. Well, you must like it. You haven't stopped eating it. Well, we want to thank you for um, working so hard to create this dish. We have one more dish to create. Okay, we have just prepared the third dish to answer the question, what's for lunch? It's a warm tortilla. Sue chefs, you did the work. Now you need to taste the results of that effort. This could be one of their favorites. Tortillas are anything sort of Mexican-ish, South, mm. you know, Southwestern tortilla driven, they love. They love it. Mm. Mm? It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> that is good. It is good. And the only thing we didn't put in here that I normally would, we put jalapenos in a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Lime. Yeah, lime Jalapeno, is good. Jalapeno, limes, yeah. yummy. Okay, so are you going to help your father do this again in the mm -hmm. kitchen? Yes, because it's worth the effort, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, Chef, I want to thank you and your daughters for coming today and helping us answer the question, what's for lunch? Lunch. It's a pleasure. But more importantly, to um, care about. Help kids eat right. And kids eating right and um, helping share that information with our community. Thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you.